Hello, welcome to Five Writers, Five Minutes, where five authors share their top writing tips. Today, we are talking about a very difficult subject, mm -hmm. rejections. Ah. And we are talking about it because my publisher has just rejected my latest manuscript. So yes, this isn't something that just happens to beginning writers or, or writers at the, at the very start of their careers. And it hurts. It really, really hurts. So Zanny, how do you deal with rejections? I actually think I've got a fairly thick skin in a way, um, partly because I write so many things. And, you know, back in the day when I was starting out, I was just an idea a minute, just pumping things out, writing things. And so when I'd send something, I didn't have, I, I was okay when they said no. I was like, okay, that's fine. I've got another one. I'll try here. <laughs> so I just kind of kept on going. And it's interesting, the things that have really pulled the rug out from under me have been the first time Queenie and Seven Moves was rejected, for example. Uh, it went to a publisher and it wasn't shortlisted. And I was deeply gutted. I was, it was tragic. Mm. And it happened maybe three or four times through my career. Um, and all of those things are things that I went out on a limb doing. So there were things outside my wheelhouse. There were things I felt extremely passionate and deeply about. And they were things that felt very much like me. So I think that was the difference. Um, so when I did get that initial rejection, I was like, oh, my gosh. But it was interesting just with a little bit of reset and, you know, a little time to grieve. When I did send that work out again, usually the second or third time, it was picked up by the right person. Uh, and, you know, it all worked out so much better in a way, you know. Uh, so I've got a lot of trust in the process, but I also have a lot of trust in my instincts, I think, knowing that when I really felt deeply about something, it really was worth persevering with. Mm. I just had to allow myself yeah. a bit of time to be sad. Yeah. Sarah, how about you? I remember my first rejection, the first novel I wrote, which was actually for adults, I sent it to a um, agent and um, she sent it back very, very swiftly. And it was clear she'd only read about six pages in. <laughs> it was This was in the days when it was, you know, a big chunk of paper as opposed to an, e uh, an electronic copy. And I just remember being so devastated because I'd felt so confident that it was going to be picked up by her. And that was really hard. Uh, since then, I've had, you know, other sort of smallish rejections, like a book was rejected by one publisher, but then picked up by another. And I think that I have developed a thicker skin over time, a bit like Zanny, so it has become less hard. And I also have this philosophy that um, it needs to find the right person. And if someone rejects it, then I don't want to go with them, in fact, because they're not the right person. Um, and the sort of smaller, you know, rejections, if you like, when you when I get feedback that something's not working or, you know, it's not quite there yet, I try not to see them as rejections. I try to see them as uh, a message that it might need a bit more work and to really take it on mm -hmm. and feel if that feedback sort of fits with me. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe it needs to be set aside and I need to do a bit more work on it. So I really try and take on that kind of feedback and not view it as a rejection, but view it as constructive. Yeah, and that's yeah. like yeah. feedback from like a publisher, which is probably a bit like feedback from a teacher, I'm guessing. Um, mm -hmm. And I can remember from my days at school. So I guess I um, don't want to sort of overlook the the positive things that can come from rejection. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think... Um, I think rejection, you have to be careful sort of who you share your um, stuff with in a way, because not everyone is going to get it. Um, mm. Up until we started doing this group, I was so sort of fearful of rejection in a way that I keep my work to myself for so long. And then finally with this group, I've sort of, you know, I'll venture to show you a chapter that I might not have shown anyone for another mm. year or something like that. Mm. And you guys will tell me it's the worst thing you've ever read. And then, uh, no, you'll you'll often be um, optimistic or positive about a thing that I might have been thinking wasn't very good. But then there'll be other things where I'll think, oh, this isn't too bad. And then you'll you'll mention these other. So I feel like um, you can be too careful about rejection. You can be so careful about rejection that you don't ever actually venture anything or put anything out there in the world or show anyone. And uh, I think there are a lot of creative people like that. 
So um, I think it's okay to show people. It's okay that people will give you feedback. It's okay that some people will hate what you've done. And they actually say that, you know, creative success, if everybody loves what you've done, then you haven't really succeeded creatively because you're not sort of testing people. You're not pushing anyone's yeah. buttons. So it's okay if some people don't like it. You can't please everybody all the time. When I was in year five, I remember standing, I, we had a little stage in class and I remember I loved reading my stories out loud and I was kind of known as the kid in class who loved to write stories. And I, um, Tristan, what you said is so important then because when I read my stories out, if I was coming up to a funny bit, and kids didn't laugh. I, I I didn't think, oh, well, that's it. I'm never going to write another story again. <laughs> uh, the thing that I would think is, I thought that was funny and kids didn't laugh. I'm going to go back to my desk now and I'm going to try and fiddle with that and make it funny because I know I can do better. And I think I've kept that ever since my year five kind of experience of reading my stories. Um, and now, like, for example, the book of Wondrous Possibilities, I pitched that to my publisher um, I think at least three or four times. And I thought, okay, something about this is not gra grabbing her attention. I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to repitch it until, because I know why I love it, but I have to make her love it. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's all very important. I remember I wrote a series called the Ghost Club series, which I really, really loved. Um, and it was funny and quirky. But in the third, while I was writing the third book, they just said, Deb, it's not doing well enough for us to co go ahead with that third book. And I'd written half of the book and I was devastated. Oh. Um, I know they let me write the third book. It was the fourth book. Um, and then, and in the end, they said, actually, what else do you want to write? And I said, well, I've got this other idea. And then, of course, I worked on the other idea, which was the second book in the Grimston trilogy called New City that went on to then win awards and be loved by kids. So rejection can be a good thing. But like Leon said at the beginning, it can hurt. You can feel like, no, wait a minute, I'm great. And this is a great idea. But you have to be less precious about it. And you have to be really willing to throw stuff away because there's a better idea just around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, I love all these responses. And and I do think I, I do think it's really important to let yourself be miserable about it for a while. Yes. Uh, you know, because this is something you've worked on. This is something you've thrown your heart into and you're not going to immediately bounce back. You're allowed mm. to be you're allowed to be upset about re rejections. But it's also important to remember when you get over being miserable and when I get over being miserable about this, I'm going to remind myself that I have had a book rejected before and it turned out to be a really positive thing because that rejection was what led me to take my writing in a really different direction. And that's when I wrote Clara and Rita, which, which are some of my favourite books. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of crossing my fingers that this is also going to turn out OK, even if it doesn't feel like it at the moment. And you know, mm. so even if there's not a direct link, all of that work goes back into your beautiful yeah. soil and yeah. will feed whatever comes next, which yeah. I mm -hmm. that's I true. Do. That's yeah. true. So yeah. if you've had something rejected recently by a publisher or a teacher or whatever, welcome to the club. <laughs> and <laughs> and the main thing to take out of it for, from as far as I'm concerned, I think as far as we're all concerned, is to keep going, you know, yes. like don't let it make you stop. Be miserable for a while and then bounce back and keep going and and show them that you've got what it takes to make and it to get to work. And let it be a self to begin with too, you know. You really want to make it, if you think it's fantastic, you will find other people who also love it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks very much, everybody. We hope that was interesting and helpful. Uh, see you next time. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Thank you. Bye. See ya.